Hi everybody and welcome back to Cotto Verdi. My name's Annette and today we're going to be sowing Campanula which are also known as Canterbury Bells or Bellflowers and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the varieties that I'm sowing, talk a little bit about the plants themselves and you know the environment that they like to grow in and how I'm going to sow them and then I'm going to go through each variety that I'm sowing just in case it sparks some interest or gives you some inspiration for what you might like to sow and then I'm going to show you how I'm sowing them which is a fairly straightforward process um, but do stay for that or skip to that if you would like to see how I'm sowing them. Now Canterbury Bells are absolutely beautiful and as you can probably tell by their name they are mostly bell shaped. There's such a huge variety of Canterbury Bells so a lot of them are really tall, some of them can be creeping or spreading. Um, generally speaking they like part shade but there are one or two that thrive in full sun but mostly they like damp, well-drained soil and they will suffer if they sit in winter wet. So if your ground gets really boggy um, or very wet during the winter months, your campanula are not going to thrive. Generally speaking, Canterbury Bells are blue, but they also come in pink and white and sort of violet colours, but mostly they're blue. I really like the white ones. If you've been on my channel a while, you'll know that I absolutely love fragrance. And unfortunately, most Canterbury Bells don't have any fragrance. Um, there is one, and I think it's called something like Versicolor Andrews, something like that, which has a slight clove scent to it. But a really interesting and good thing about Canterbury Bells is that, generally speaking, they're edible. Now, I say that with a caveat in that don't go eating all of your bell flowers um, before checking whether your particular variety is edible. But not only can you eat the leaves and the roots, um, which kind of tastes sweet and parsnipy like maybe, um, but you can also eat the flowers. Now, they're not going to have a great fragrance. They're kind of bland, but um, they're pretty. So if you want to like decorate your salads or something, you can decorate your salads with the flowers from Canterbury Bells. But as I said, do check. Don't take my word for it. Um, read up on the variety that you have and make sure you can eat it before you start consuming them. <laughs> A lot of Canterbury Bells are perennial, uh, some of them are biennial. Uh, so do check when you're sowing which variety you have, um, if you are particularly interested in having flowers that come back year after year, um, you need to pick specific varieties. I think a lot of the creeping um, Canterbury Bells are perennial, but it really depends on what hardiness zone you live in and whether that particular Canterbury Bell is going to go through the winter. But some of them are biennials, and these are the Campanula medium, which I'm going to be sowing some of those today. Um, and those will grow the first year and then flower the second year. If you sow them early enough, they might flower the first year, but they'll flower better the second year. So I'm sowing all of these now in June which is a great time to sow biennials. It gives them a chance to get big enough to go through the winter um, and I'm going to sow um, all of them today whether they're biennial or perennial. So the first seed I want to talk about is called Campanula latifolia alba. The reason it's called alba is because I'm sowing the white version and this is quite a tall campanula. It's going to grow to about 120 centimetres so between three and four foot tall. Latifolia is going to look absolutely brilliant planted amongst ferns on the edge of like a woodland setting in amongst other woodland perennials. Um, it does need a few hours of sun in order to flower better. Um, you can plant it in full sun but um, it also does quite well in part shade. Then I'm sowing two more really tall campanulas. Um, they are both called Pyramidalis. One of them is Alba, so again the white version, and the other one is going to be the blue version. And these grow to 270 centimetres, 2.7 metres. So they are super tall. I mean, that's got to be quite a few foot. I haven't worked it out, but it's very tall. They're very tall. So the Pyramidalis are also called chimney bell flowers, and I'm guessing that's because they're so tall and upright and they're super vigorous. So I'm really looking forward to having these perennials in my garden too. The next one I'm sowing I need to read. It's called Campanula trichelium phytum lilac. 
I'll put the name up on the screen because I have no idea if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Um, but this one grows to 90 centimetres, so about three foot. And it's got these absolutely gorgeous, almost upward facing lilac blooms. This one is also called Bats in the Belfry or Nettle Leaf Campanula. And I'm guessing that's because uh, the leaves look like nettles. The next one that I'm sewing is called Rigi Rigidipula, Rigi Campanula Rigidipula. I hope I'm saying these right. So this one is particularly special because it's from Kenya and Ethiopia and it is apparently the world's most southerly growing campanula. Yeah, I think I've got that right. It grows to about, well actually I've read varying heights but my seed packet says it grows between 40 and 60 centimetres tall, so nearly two foot. And apparently it's got really strong stems of like bearded blue bell-shaped flowers. I'm also sowing Campanula Rapunculus. I think I like the name of this one because it sounds like ranunculus. These are also known as Rampian Bellflowers. This plant grows up to about 90 centimetres, so three foot in height. Some birds making a racket. So this particular Campanula, um, the roots from this particular Campanula are the ones that are um, used most for eating. They're edible, I'm guessing because they make thicker or better roots or something. And it's, they're quite sweet tasting. And apparently you can eat them raw as well, but you can also eat the leaves and the flowers on this particular Campanula. So um, you can pretty much eat the whole plant, I think, by the sounds of things. Then I'm sowing Campanula primulifolia and the reason this one is called primulifolia is because the leaves on this one look very much like a primula. So they'll, you'll think you're growing a primula and it's actually a campanula. This one's also known as the Spanish bellflower. It's going to grow to 60 centimetres tall and it's kind of got star-shaped flowers. On this campanula the flowers are very open and they've kind of looked got like a deep violet eye to them so it's really pretty I find this one very attractive. Another really good thing about this Campanula the Primifolia is that it's going to thrive on dry poor soil which unlike all the other Campanulas that prefer it to be moist and well drained so if you're in a particularly hot environment and you've got bad soil try this one um, because I think it's going to do really well. And then the last Campanulas I'm sowing I'm grouping them all together so I've got singles and doubles and they're Campanula medium so I'm growing a doubles mix which has got pink white and blue in it and then with the singles I've I'm sowing those individually so I've got pink singles white signals, signals, singles and blue singles. And these are the Campanula that are definitely biennial. So we sow them this year for them to flower next year. Um, they may flower the following year, but I'll probably sow these every single year to make sure that I have flowers each season. Um, and these have got really nice big bells and they're so pretty. They look great in flower arrangements. They're good for cutting. They're going to last a long time. If you sow these in March, you could possibly have flowers the same year. Um, but if you sow them any time from April onwards, then you, you're unlikely to get flowers the same season and you'll get flowers the following season. I'm sowing all of mine in June. So the way I'm going to sow them is I'm going to use ordinary compost, the compost that I always use, which is the Melcourt Silver Grow Petri compost. If you've been on my channel a while, you'll know that I really like this compost and being peat free, it's something that I feel like I'm helping the environment and our world, our planet, by using peat-free compost. So I'm going to sow into cell trays and I'm going to place the seed on the top and cover with a sprinkling of vermiculite. And the reason that I'm covering with vermiculite and not compost is because light aids germination with most of the Canterbury Bells and vermiculite is like a volcanic substance and it lets the light through whilst keeping your seed in place and helping your compost to retain its moisture. So that's why I use vermiculite. The best temperature for Canterbury Bells to germinate is between 15 and 20 degrees. So now is a perfect time in June for us here in the UK to be sowing them, as long as we don't have another heat wave suddenly. 
um, and they should germinate in like 14 to 28 days, something like that. So keep an eye on them, keep them moist and they should be fine. So I'm going to sow my seeds, cover them with vermiculite, um, give them a water and I won't water from the top, I'm going to bottom water them so that the seeds aren't dislodged and then I'm going to place them in my cold frames where they're going to be protected from any heavy downpours that we might have. I mean I wish we'd have some rain but <laughs> We don't seem to be having a lot of rain at the moment, but just in case, I don't want all my seeds to wash all over the place, so I will use the lids of the cold frames to protect them from the weather. And also, if they're in the cold frames, I can keep an eye on their moisture levels. Um, I'm not actually going to cover the seed trays with anything, so I'm not going to use a clear plastic lid or anything like that. I'm just going to sort of treat them as if they were sown in my garden beds and you can sow canterbury bells in your garden beds if you prefer to do that um, i prefer not to because i've got so much growing at the moment um, i don't want them to get lost and also you know we have cats and animals and stuff and they can get into the beds especially if i make them a nice clear patch of earth <laughs> so it's easier for me to sow into cells um, but you could use a pot if you wanted to um, you can use anything to sow them so long as there's good drainage well that's it for today i really hope you've enjoyed this video if you have enjoyed it please do give it a like because it makes such a big difference to me and if you haven't subscribed yet and you'd like to see more videos like this then do subscribe to my channel i'm making videos all the time about things that i'm doing in my garden so it'd be really lovely to have you following along thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all next time